Rwanda has been urged by France to end all support for N23 rebels in Democratic Republic of Congo DRC. Paris made the call Tuesday on Rwanda to cease all support for the M23 and to withdraw from Congolese territory. That the true responsibility lies primarily with the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo, as well as with these external actors who refuse to address the root causes of the problem. Nowhere else. France's statement came ahead of the United States warning about the situation at a meeting of the UN Security Council on Tuesday evening. The US had warned Rwanda and the DSC that they must walk back from the brink of war. This is a very expensive lie, which makes no logical sense. They speak the truth only in whispers, afraid to displease the Congolese government and compromise their own interests. But in fact, the emboldened leaders of the DRC to take more and more drastic steps to consolidate its populist base in the process, hurting their own people. Even though the United Nations group of experts documents the collaboration between the Congolese army and FDRR and other militias, not to mention the alarming rise in hate speech. These items are virtually ignored as if they are of no consequence. The relationship between Congo Democratic Republic of Congo and Rwanda has been complex and tumultuous, marked by historical, political and economic factors, historical context, the roots of the conflict between Congo and Rwanda can be traced back to the colonial era when both countries were under European rule. Then arbitrary borders drawn by colonial powers divided ethnic groups, leading to tensions that persist to this day. This attitude is shocking, but not surprising, given what Rwandans know and saw in our region in the 1990s. We have had enough of this hypocrisy. It is high time that the unwarranted verification of Rwanda stopped. Of course, we are directly affected when the remnants of the militias that committed genocide in Rwanda become auxiliary forces of the DRC army and conduct attacks across our border. No country can accept this. Rwanda will never accept this as normal and will always respond appropriately because our security and stability are paramount. We could not have learned better from our history. There are more than a hundred armed groups flourishing in Eastern Congo, including Rwandan genocidas militia like the FDRR. These groups create constant security for civilians in DRC and in Rwanda. The reason this situation prevails is because DRC is unwilling or unable to govern its territory. Should Rwanda be the one to bear the dysfunction of this immense country? The situation of the Congolese refugees, whose very right to a nationality is denied by their own home country, is a case in point. It is not just a question of hate speech, but of active persecution over decades. Rwanda is among the countries in East Africa which has hosted hundreds of thousands of Congolese refugees for decades. We have more than 70,000 registered in Rwanda alone. 
and new refugees continue to arrive even now. Yet the international community effectively pretends that these people do not exist or that they don't know what causes them to be refugees in the first place. The policy seems to be for them to remain in Rwanda indefinitely, which only serves to whitewash the lie that they are actually Rwandans who deserved to be expelled. This is an international problem, and it requires an international solution because the unresolved political issues which cause these armed groups to keep coming up and which underlie the hate speech we keep seeing are the same. Rwanda will not accept to bear the burden for the DRC's responsibilities. We have enough burdens of our own to bear, and we shall do so as effectively as we can. The conditions for Congolese refugees to return home in safety and dignity must be established. In any case, Rwanda will not stop them from going home in any way they choose.